beginner's guide for balancing equations. Um, the first thing that I want to let you know is that there's no magic to balancing equations. There's no secret that you can somehow pick up and all of a sudden become a guru. Um, the reason I made this video is that some students just seem to struggle with how do I even do that or the concept behind it. And so if you're really having troubles, um, hopefully I can kind of clear some of that up. And if you're not, this is probably not the video for you. I would just go Google balancing equations practice and you'll find some really hard ones out that you can try your hand at. Um, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to start, the first one we're going to talk about is the combustion of hydrogen. Um, this is the Hindenburg explosion and after this we quit putting uh, hydrogen gas in, into blimps for obvious reasons. But essentially what happens is hydrogen combines with oxygen. Okay, so if we look at the equation down here at the bottom, the equation as it is, is H2 plus O2 yields water, or H2O, and we're gonna get a lot of energy out of there as well. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is what these numbers actually mean. So this two down here is a subscript, and that means that it tells you how many atoms of hydrogen are in a molecule. And so this is what the molecule of hydrogen would look like. We're gonna have two atoms of hydrogen. The thing that you need to remember is that you can never change the subscripts. Subscripts have to remain the same, because if you change it, you're changing what that molecule actually actually is. And so this would be H2, this would be O2, so we have two oxygen molecules attached together. And then finally we have H2O, and H2O is one oxygen and two hydrogens on either side. And so when I look at this, a lot of people will just try to go and answer this, but maybe we need to step back a little bit and actually look graphically at, at what's going on here. And so when I look at this, I can see here's reactants before the reaction and products. And so just looking at it, when these are graphically shown, you can see that I have two of these uh, red oxygen atoms on the left side and only one on the right. And so the first thing you might want to do is kind of double that. And so let me do that. Okay, so now visually we've got two water molecules. And so I've got two reds on the right side and two reds on the left side. You'll also notice, so that's balanced, that the hydrogens are changed. And so I have four hydrogens on the right side, but I only have two on the left side. So now let me click it again, and we've got a balanced equation. In other words, I can never change the subscripts. I can never change what these molecules are. But when you're balancing equations, what you're trying to do is add more of the molecules so you can see that reactants and products will be balanced. Okay, now how do we actually write that out? So we can put in front of here what are called coefficients. And coefficients are numbers in front of the molecule. It tells you how many there are. And so there is one oxygen, and we never write the coefficient of one. And so you don't want to write one as a coefficient. If it's a coefficient of one, you just leave it blank. But let's go over here to H2. You've got this H2, that H2, and so you have two H2. So that would be on the left side. If we go on to the right side, you have this molecule of water, this molecule of water, and so we have two molecules of water on the right side. And so if we step through this, this means we have two molecules of H2, so that would be four hydrogens on the left side. After you balance an equation, you want to go back and look at it and make sure it's balanced. Over here, we have two H2s as well, so we have four hydrogens. We have two oxygens on the left side, and we have two, this coefficient multiplies times this whole thing, so we have two oxygens on the right side as well. And so we would call that a balanced equation. And so hopefully just by looking at it graphically, that might help a little bit. Let's go to the next one. Next one in a chemistry lab is, um, you see it all the time, this is a Bunsen burner. Um, and these are some flames from a Bunsen burner. And so uh, a Bunsen burner works using a gas called methane, and methane is CH4. So if we take a look at methane, Methane looks like this right here. It's got one carbon molecule and then it's got four hydrogens attached around the outside. And when we, when we burn methane, what that really means is that we're combining methane with oxygen and we're creating these two things in complete combustion. We're, com we're creating some carbon dioxide gas. That's one carbon, two oxygens. And then we're creating a little bit of water. The other thing we produce is gonna be energy. Okay, so if you look at this, just graphically on the left side and on the right side, the first thing, at least to me, that jumps out is that there's way more hydrogen on the left side than the right side. So the first thing I could do would be to add another water on the right side. So if I've added another water on the right side, the, the yellow balls on the right now match the yellow balls on the left. The carbon, there's only one on the left, matches the one on the right, and so we must be getting really close. But I've got four reds on the right, and I only have two. And so I have to add that as a whole molecule. So if I add one more molecule of oxygen, 
now we have a balanced equation. So how do we write that out? So methane on the left side, I have one methane, but I'm not going to write the number one. How many molecules of oxygen do we have? We have two. So I'm going to put a two as a coefficient right here. Now on the right side, we only have one carbon dioxide. So I'm not going to put a one, but there should be uh, in your mind a one there. And then how much water do we have? We have just two waters. And so I'm going to put two right here. Now we could go through the whole thing. So how many carbons do we have? One on the left, one on the right. How many hydrogen do we have? Four on the left. And this two is multiplied the subscript. So we've got four on the right and four on the left. And then if we look at oxygen, we've got four on the left. And then we've got two oxygen here and we have two oxygen there. And so when I'm solving and trying to balance equations, I'm not really seeing these, um, but if that helps you visualize it, um, then it'll help you do better at that. So let's try. So the only way to get better at this is to just practice. And so let's try a few and I'll show you how I would think through this in my mind. So if we look at the first one, this is H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, breaks down into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Okay, so how would, I, how would I set this up? Well, on the left side, we've got H2. So if I want to write it out, I could. So I've got two hydrogens on the left. And as far as oxygens on the left, I've got two oxygens as well. And so on the right side, how many hydrogens do I have? I have two on the right and I have two on the left as well. And so this already is a balanced equation. And so what do you do if you find a balanced equation that's already balanced? You don't do anything to it. In other words, we'd write a one in front of each of those, but we never write ones, and so I'm gonna leave that one the way it is. Let's go to the next one. On the left side, we've got sodium, we've got chlorine gas, and then we're making table salt. And so if you wanna write this out, you could. We've got Na, and I've got one of those. I've got chlorine on the left side, and I've got two of those. So that's on the left side, that's on the reactant side. Now let's go to the product side. How many sodium do we have? We only have one sodium. And how many chlorine do we have on the right side? Well, we only have one chlorine. So that's a problem, because on the uh, product side, we only have one atom of chlorine, and on the reactant side, we actually have two. So how could I fix that? Well. Let's try to go back. Let's say I've got too few chlorine on this side. So let me just try and add the next step, which is to add a two on the right side. So by adding a two on the right side, I've taken care of my chlorine. So on the right side now, I have two sodium and two chlorine. But I've, I've set up with another problem. In other words, I have two sodium on the right side. So now I have to balance that over here. So I'm gonna come back here and write a two over here, which that makes this a two. Okay, so now we've got two, 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 and that's balanced. And so the right answer for that one is to put a two in front of the sodium and then a two in front of the sodium chloride. And that's a balanced equation. Remember, you can never change the subscript. All right, let's do another one. Another one. And so these are getting progressively harder. And so I'll give you some tips as far as that goes. Um, the first tip would be this. If we look at this one, we've got silver sulfide, silver, and then sulfur. And so this eight jumps out right away. So on the right side, I've got eight sulfur atoms. If we look on the left side, I've only got one. And so as a bare minimum, I'm going to try writing an eight right here. Let's see what that does. Well, now we have eight sulfur on the left side, eight sulfur on the right side but our silvers aren't matching. So on the left side, we actually have 16 silver, but on the right side, we only have one. And so let me just try writing a 16 down. So now that's a balanced equation. So we could go through 16 silver, 16 silver, eight sulfur, eight sulfur, and that's gonna be a balanced equation. The nice thing about balancing equations is you can always check it at the end and you know that you are right. It's not like you're maybe right. You absolutely are right as long as you're just adding the coefficients. All right, so here's the ones that are more likely that you're gonna find. And so let's work through this and always be patient, remembering that if you get frustrated, you can just erase them all, start over again. You should be able to figure them all out. It's just kind of a guess and check. But let me show you how I would think this one out. So we've got water, carbon dioxide, got a hydrocarbon here, and then we've got an oxygen. And so on the right side, the thing that jumps out to me right away is we've got seven carbons on the right side. And so what I'm gonna to try to do is put a seven over here. Okay, so what does that do for me? Now I've got my seven carbons taken care of. Um, the other thing that jumps out right away is on the right side I have eight hydrogens and water is the only thing on the left side that actually has hydrogens. And so if there's an eight here, let me try putting a four over here. 
Okay, so what that does is give me hydrogen on the left is going to give me 8. Hydrogen on the right side is going to give me 8 as well. Now I love it when I solve these and I get down to just like one thing left and it has one atom in it. And so I think carbons and hydrogens are good on either side, but let me take a look at the oxygens. On the left side we have four oxygens, so in this molecule of four waters. And then we have 14 here. And so I've got 14 total oxygens, seven here, and then four over here. And so how do I get to, so again, I've got 18 total. And so if I were to put a nine over here, that would give me, on the right side, 18 total oxygens, on the left side, totally ox uh, uh, 18 total oxygens as well. So that would be a perfectly balanced equation. And so that's kind of my starter's guide on how to balance equations. Um, remember, you can only add the coefficients. You can never change the subscripts. And, uh, and if you can get confused, start imagining them as molecules and, and even draw them out if you have to, and that might help a little bit. So uh, I hope that's helpful, and uh, have a great day.